our illusions are being replaced by truth. This has been happening for quite some time, but now the process is being expedited, quickened, and you've got to be ready if you aren't already. So it's big, it's big, it's big. So much of 2024 has been a hurry up and get ready that, you know, kind of wait for it kind of phenomenon. And I've been speaking to so many people all over the world and the experiences that us collectives are experiencing are uncannily similar to each other, unlike any other time in our lives. Now, maybe you have even been noticing that the collective energy has been stagnant, slow, sluggish, and then a quickening of energy. Maybe things get frantic or chaotic and crazy. And maybe it's in those fits and starts that you experience it, or almost as if there's a thick, invisible fog that's like blanketing us, like a sense of heaviness, stagnation, and even a morose vibe in the air. People's behaviors and patterns are changing. Or maybe you're on the other end. That means like you're creating to the slow moving energies because you are juggling and overcoming challenges and maybe even dealing with unusual, bizarre situations. Hello, and I wanna welcome you back, beautiful manifestors. And if you're new here, I am Sterling Meyer, and I wanna thank you for viewing me. So please support this channel with liking, subscribing, and sharing because it really makes a huge difference. And I truly thank you. Okay, so behind the scenes, I have been doing some intuitive investigative work for the past 18 months. Really, it started with a downloaded vision that I received of changes that are coming. And those like downloads were visions of the old world that has ended. Life as we know it is actually gone now. So I kind of got that premonition and then I watched it unfold. I wanted to be the healthy skeptic and see if my intuition was correct. So since January, you know, I've seen these kinds of visions unfold in, in come into the physical realm. But although I've been a manifestation coach for over a decade, I began my journey as a psychic over two decades ago and have done quite a bit of intuitive work professionally since then. And my passion is teaching people all over the world to align with their purpose, their destiny, that they're here to experience and to teach how to experience the process of doing so in a magical, miraculous, exciting and fulfilling way. Make that journey truly as satisfying as the destination of reaching goals because suffering is actually optional. And if you're curious what I mean when I say suffering is optional, please see my interview on the Jeff Mara show where we discuss why that's a truth and how you can access peaceful, blissful kind of life like every single day as we shift to this new world. Otherwise, it's gonna be it's gonna to continue to be overwhelming and frightening process. So I will leave the link below in the description section right here. Um, but recently, I just wanted to say, I have been guided to knowledge and I wanted to share this with you, this phenomenal period that we are in, even if, even though it is kind of mysterious and difficulties are rising and challenges, there's adjustments to be made. But in this video, we will demystify these current phenomenons and we're going to shed illuminating light, intuitive guidance through it, clarity and understanding. This provides empowerment and answers, a clear pathway to move forward towards the manifestations that you've been envisioning for yourself. So have you noticed how the human energy in 2024 just feels different? If so, you're not alone in feeling this. So I'll be using the energy cards 
coupled with intuition to help move us through this challenging time. So first, I will clarify why this shift is happening and what it means, okay? And what kind of results that we may encounter as we move forward. So right now we are dealing with the aftermath of collective trauma. One major factor behind the energy shift is the lingering aftermath of global events over the past few years. We've endured pandemic and social upheaval, political polarization. We've experienced economic challenges and environmental disasters. These things have been happening for a while now, but now it's like there's an uptick, there's a surge. And these have left like an imprint on our collective psyche. However, we're resilient and collective trauma leaves its mark both physically and energetically. The constant state of fight or flight, fight or flight, panic, fight, this kind of energy, fear, 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 which is all, you know, the root of anger and sadness and fleeing. Many of us have experienced this and it's worn us down. This has created kind of energetic hangover where even though we're trying to return to normal, the weight of recent events still lingers and it's making us feel emotionally stuck. We've been imbalanced with technology overload. Our fast paced technological world is both a blessing and a curse. While we're more connected than ever technologically, it's left us mentally drained because we're constantly plugged in, bombarded by notifications, social media updates and news alerts. The digital landscape is overwhelming and it's focusing it's focus, focusing us on the wrong things. It's actually forcing our minds to process more than ever before. And that's where the overload comes from. This digital overload that I'm talking about, it's draining our life force energy. Instead of feeling vibrant and alive, we're becoming detached from our true selves. We're caught in a cycle of mindless consumption contributing to the sense of stagnation. And we're also dealing with uncertainty. That's the fear. That's the anxiety. That's the anger. Because we don't know what the future climate is going to bring, what kind of change it's going to bring. AI advancements, uh, economic instability, wars. There's a lot of unknowns ahead of us. And we're in an era where the rules are changing and people are struggling to find a sense of stability or direction. Now this uncertainty leads to anxiety again, like I said, and it actually pulls down our energetic vibration instead of feeling empowered to move forward. Many people are just resigned. They're tired. They're stuck in fear and decision and doubt, and it's contributing to a collective energetic heaviness. It's all become quite cohesive. And as a result, we're disconnected from nature and ourselves, you know, especially living in like urban areas and environments. And we're spending so much time indoors. We're not, we're working in this artificial world, but we're still humans and we live in a physical world. We've lost touch with the natural world and its restorative power. Okay, so nature is inherently healing. It's rejuvenating. And our modern lifestyles leave so little room for it. And the same thing with connecting with others. We're imbalanced. Technolo technology is not gonna change. It's not gonna go anywhere, but we need to find a balance. Okay, and this kind of chaos, if you will, disconnects us from our deeper purpose, our desires, it's distractions away from it. Many people, they feel lost. They're working jobs they dislike. Maybe that's you. I've talked to a lot of them and they're living in this state of survival instead of thriving. 
The lack of alignment with our inner truth creates an energetic friction resulting in feelings of being weighted down. We're suffering from the influence of mass media that constantly flows negative news. Sensationalism, you know, that's another contributor. We're inundated with stories of conflict, disaster, and division. Well, some believe you know, being informed is important and that kind of thing. But the repetitive cycle of negativity can unconsciously drain our energy and it leaves us feeling hopeless and morose and really kind of dead to the world. So what does this mean? If this energy continues unchecked, it could lead to widespread burnout, which to me, burnout is like right next to death. It's going to lead to more disillusionment and even as a society, we're just going to break down. A population that feels stuck and weighted down is less likely to innovate, collaborate and grow. And that's what we need to focus on. On an individual level, people might experience even mental health struggles, depression, anxiety and chronic fatigue, but even on a higher level, a paralyzed level. We don't need to hit that brick wall. We really don't. We could just go, this isn't working and start changing. So the good news is that we are resilient. We have energy that we can utilize and we can shift it. So let's explore this further with one of my favorite decks to work with the energy cards. So before I started this video, I actually, meditated for a while on the collective energies and I got four cards that were really fascinating to me and it said a lot. So the first card, walking away, walking away. I've been using this energy deck for as long as it's been out, I don't know, for the longest time and it's one of my favorite. You know, I'm a manifester, manifestation coach. I work with people I want to tune into energy because manifesting is energy. So there it is, walking away. This is what we have to do. We have to walk away from the imbalance. We've got to pull our power back in. We've got to start dictating to our lives and not allowing all this technology and all the distractions and the noise to dominate us. We've given our power over. I mean, the the late, I don't know if you realize this, but you know, we know about past addictions, social past addictions, you know, lots of drinking and smoking and things like that. Right. And now we've, we've not, we've not improved. I know it's like nobody smokes anymore. Things like that. You're thinking, but it's just as toxic and bad to be totally, uh, addicted to technology, it's just as bad. So I think a lot of us don't realize that. I mean, you may realize it, but a lot of us don't, don't realize it, that it's just as harmful and toxic. Second card, action. Action is the second card. Do you see there's a, there's a black horse and there's a white horse? That's balance. We've got to take action to balance. Balance our energies, balance our lives. The theme is balance. When we create that balance, we're going to open up so many opportunities for our lives. It's going to enrich our lives. So for instance, you know, if we're creating a balance and we're not isolating as much and we're not on the internet as much and we're not filling our lives with all these distractions and scrolling on social media and etc then we're going to be forced to get together to feed our human side we're going to spend time in nature we're going to create communities again we're going to get out of that isolation that we were never built for. We were always designed to be in communities and be connected to one another. But th that's what I really love about 
decades ago before technology, because I think about this sometimes. I think about, okay, so if this were, I don't know, the 60s or the 70s or something, and you would have, you'd be at home and you'd go, okay, I have a book. I've got about four channels to watch. Uh, I can clean the house and I could chat on the phone, but that's it. What, four things? I mean, how long is it going to take before you're going to move on? Oh, and I forgot books. Okay, so, you know, you can count it on one hand what you could do. And then you do it and then you, you decide to get out and connect with the world and become stimulated that way become stiff, that's where your stimuli is from. It's not from the internet or social media. And the social media is not replacing your social life. So the next card I got, and I'm gonna pull some clarifiers as well while we're here. Happy family. I, I, I can't make this up, I am not kidding. These are the cards that flew out of the deck. Happy family. And I really meditated on what are the messages that we need to address right here, right now, today. Happy family. Happy family. Okay, so that includes our family, our immediate family, and our extended family, which is our community and our friends. That's what family is. It's a collective. And then the last card that came out, victory. I know it's, I'm telling you, this is the way they flew out. Walking away, action, happy family, and victory. Now I'm gonna pull some clarifying cards here uh, for, for, the, for each of these cards, okay? Just to get a little more information on each one, see what else is revealed. And then I'm going to pull a, a message card, and then I'm gonna end it with, you'll see, you gotta stay tuned to find out. It's a great, great little surprise, and I'm excited to do it, actually. Okay, so, all right. So we're gonna see what four cards, spirit guides, four cards, please to clarify the cards on the table. There's one. This is exciting. Two, three, four. Sitting there on my hand, I didn't even see it until I looked down. Wow, guys, I'm, <laughs> I just, I'm amazed. <laughs> All right. Oh, bottom of the deck, the Empress. So I'm going to pull that out too. And I'm going to go through all these. Ah, bottom of the deck, energy cards, patience. All right. Patience. It's going to take patience for this huge change. You know, I was talking to somebody the other day and they asked me, when did the age of Aquarius happen? Or, you know, what is, when is this change? How long is it going to take? And I said, you know, what came to me is a perfect analogy. It's a new dawn, you know, the age of Aquarius in the sixties, you know, this is the dawning of the age of Aquarius. And I said, it's like this, we're talking about a 2000 year span and I likened it to a new day. You know, if you've ever been out and it's pitch black and you're right on the precipice of it becoming light and you look around and you go, oh, I think it's getting lighter, right? And you start to notice it. I think it's getting lighter. And then it does become a little lighter and you notice the darkness is evaporating. And I really like to say the light is like problem solved, harmony, peace, growth, evolution, and change for the better 
and the darkness is all the troubles and the things that haven't been working for so long and we're all aware of what that is. So then it gets lighter and lighter and lighter. And so I liken when they say, when is this new period upon us? And I said, it's like saying, when is the new day here? So if it's light and it's no longer dark, even just a wee bit, you could call that a new day. And then it gets like even more light, but the sun's not up. You could call that a new day. And then you start to see the sun on the horizon. You could call that a new day. Or when the sun completely comes up, you see how this gradual process, and you know what? If you say it's a new day when you're starting to see that light show up, you're not wrong. And if you, if you are the one that declares a new day when the sun is completely up, you're not wrong there either. So we're in this process right now. So I'm gonna share with you walking away that was the first card that i got and then i got this can you see it this is judgment okay so if you're not familiar with judgment it's just one of my favorite cards judgment is about awakening is about coming out of that sleep you see this person is blowing a horn it's the wake-up call and you're gonna change your purpose, your consciousness, and your habits with judgment. It's not about judging people. It's about waking up. It's about a rebirth. It's about waking up to life and rebirth. I love it, I love it, I love it. I love that card. I always love to see that card pop up. Action, action. Now we have you're not I'm you saw me I am I am not making this up action watch six of pentacles the six of pentacles is about balance three and three balance and it's also about communities three the number three plus three is six the three is about communities and things are built in threes. That's a magic number. There's three months to each season. Three is a trine. The spirit and the Holy Ghost, you know, it, there's threes everywhere that you look. There are threes. And this is like a, a this is a balance. So six of pentacles, balance. And then what I got with happy family is I got the seven of pentacles, the seven of pentacles, okay? Now the seven represents internal growth, spiritual growth. It's an enlightened stage. It's about turning inward and working on the energetic side of us, healing, letting go, purging, getting ready for the new. That's what seven's about. It's about our own evolutionary growth that happens within or that ripples at without all around us and impacts the world okay right ha Oop. <laughs> happy family happy family and the seven of pentacles S work pentacles are about work we've got work to do we've got work to do we've got to rebuild you know it's like raising a house tearing it all down, removing it, clearing it, and building a whole new house that represents the world. It's work to do that, but it's worth it because happy family is connected to it. Happy communities is connected to it. And then I have the last one, victory, and the card that came out was the lover's card. The lover's card. Victory, the lover's card. Lover's card is about making a choice. It's also about balancing our male and female energies in partnership within ourselves. This is a really powerful card and it doesn't have to represent romantic love. It can represent, like I said, our relationship to ourselves, the choices that we make, the balance that we strike in our lives. Victory. 
you know, I I went through this deck. I wasn't even sure how many cards were going to pop out, and four came out. So I, and then I saw how this beautiful story unfolds. How we go from walking away, taking balanced action, creating our communities and our happy families, going back to who we truly are, our connected selves, our human side balanced with our energetic side, connecting to nature, the physical world around us. We've turned into so many virtual worlds. Interesting, great technology, right? I mean, we're creative beings. That's what we're here to do. We create an experience, create an experience, and that's all there is to life. That's it. It's a series of creations and experiences. But we also have to have a balance. So coming back to our communities is what's going to create that balance. And we just have to start. And guess what? You want to know when this process is over and it's really a new day? If enough of us are actually doing this, if enough of us are actually taking and heeding this advice, and we're meditating and we're grounding and we're creating that balance and we're taking our power back where we have given it over. And once you really ground that energy, new ideas can come in because the mind, the monkey mind, the chatter brain mind has quieted down. The noise has quieted. I spoke to somebody just earlier today and He's, he's in his early 30s and he says, there's so much noise in the world. There's so much noise. And I said, yeah, distractions, and, you know, and we named a lot of ways you can say noise and <laughs> distractions. So grounding ourselves and meditating is not only going to raise our vibration and raise everybody else's because it is infectious and we are one and we are telepathic and we do feel each other's energies. And it doesn't take that many of us to do this, to bring everybody over, to help lead the pack, so to speak. So just because you feel like you might be one person, you're making a massive, massive difference. And as long as you're doing that, you are making a massive difference and you can just let the rest fall into place and let the rest go because you're actually doing your part, which is a lot more than you may ever realize. It's amazing. It's wonderful. It's incredible. Um, so that's victory, the lover's card, and then the card under the deck, which means this is not wh what you see right now. This is what's around the corner. This is um, kind of in the blind spot, right? And that's the empress card, creativity abundance, balanced energies with feminine energy balancing out the male energies that have been out of balance for a while. It's fruitful. It's peace. It's centeredness. It's intuition. Remember I was talking about meditating, grounding, so you can hear your higher wisdom to get that chatter, those distractions, the noise out, and you will be led and you will dance through this process that we're going through instead of struggling. The struggling is coming from the resistance. You know, all the craziness or you've heard about or you experienced and this and that, that all comes down to resistance, non-acceptance. We have to be accepting. But some reason, we fear change. It's unfamiliar. We don't know what's going to happen. But when you meditate and you really quiet that mind, you're going to hear something. I hear peace. I hear it's okay. I hear everything is in divine order and that this is all for everything that we're going through is for a higher good. And we're being carried. We're being led. And you can hear how you need to be led and what steps you can take so that you can live an extraordinary life and you could do what you love to do, which is fulfilling your purpose here. And you could be led to that and you could be led to the abundance that comes from that. And you could be working. No, 
You could be playing instead of working. Your work will transform into play as it always was meant to be. It was always meant to be that. Work is supposed to be your talents, the things you love, your expression of these things that you get to experience outside of you that are within you that then become realized in the physical realm, you know? They're in it, it's energetically there. If you have a desire for something, it is meant to be. That's your purpose. That is your job on this planet is connect with that purpose and flourish with that purpose, which you will flourish. You absolutely will because you're on path, because you're here fulfilling that destiny that you were always meant to experience and create in the world and experience, right? I went back to manifesting, creating, create experience, create experience, but we can't do it when we're blocked and we get blocked by fear. Okay. The last card, patience. I think, did I talk about this already? Patience. It's going to take patience. It's going to take acceptance. It's going to take diligence one day at a time with a practice in place um you know i shared with you my practice i do the aom system and then i you know i meditate as well and i like to use these cards i've been reading cards since 1998 i like to read these cards as a way to check in and just get that confirmation of the energy that i'm creating um because the cards, they show the energy that's going on, but we have free will. So nothing is ever written in stone. We have freedom, we have free will. So energies can change. I'm going to try this new deck. Um, I wanted a new toy, something to play with. So let's see what messages come out from this deck. I'll take it. Okay. Ah, which partnership, partnership, unity, connecting, partnerships. I'll show you. Can you see it? Partnerships. It's really reflecting what we talked about happy family, you know, the lover's card. That's the answer. You know, I'm asking what is our message that's gonna help us navigate? That's our answer. And that's what we have to do. You know, it's like we have to work with, we have to walk away from what doesn't work first. Then, you know, start moving away. And, even simultaneously create the balance, create, take the action for balance as we're walking away, action, walking into a new world and get together with our people, happy family, and that leads us to victory. So I'm going to read this, this partnership. Grow good relationships, partners support one another, co-create, problem solve together. Forging positive new partnerships is a potent way to unlock our personal growth. No, I can't make this stuff up, no. I mean, it's amazing. And I hope you see it with the clarity that I'm seeing it. And I am so inspired by these messages and I'm so excited because it has been such challenging times. And that's why I really felt called. I mean, this was coming to me in my sleep and in the morning is just calling me to do this video for all of you and to connect. So please, before we go, I've got one one little thing I'm gonna do here, and that is to read from this book for one additional, wow. Oh, wow. 
Beware of the competitive mind. No better statement of the principle of creative action can be formulated than the favorite declaration of the late golden rule, Jones of Toledo. What I want for myself, I want for everybody. That's where I was led to that what I want for myself. Do you see competition drives us apart? What I want, I want for everybody. This has been magical. I thank you. And I also want to encourage you to leave comments. Tell me what you think about this new, ah, uh, this new way of uh, presenting the channel. I'm really excited about it. And um, I think it's spot on and I believe intuition and the creative source of all energies led me here. So I trusted it. I went with it. So let me know what your comments are and what you thought about this. And um, I send my love to all of you. I connect with all of you right here and in my community as well. It's a rebirth. It's a wonderful time. And I thank you so much for joining me. And I hope to see you next week. So like, share, subscribe to keep this channel alive.